in the view. So we have a view, you have a wide view on your storyboard scene. You drag in a label, let us do that in code. The dragging the label into code, we haven't done yet. We haven't done anything yet. So imagine you drag in a label into your view scene. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So in my common init here, uh, my common init, I will write a next function here. Private function, call it setup message label. And in my common init, I'll call setup message label. And setup message label. So now we need to lay out the view or add the view, add the message label to the main view. We start off by saying add sub view, message label. So when we do that one line, then our lazy variable gets called and it returns us the label. Everybody? Everybody? When I say message label here, that's, where the, that's the, the first time I use message label. It returns me the message label that we just created. It returns me that message label here. It returns me, returns the message label we created above. So now I have a message label, I could use it. The first thing you do with coding, with um, programmable UI, is add sub view, the thing that you want to add. So in our main view, we say we want to add a label to it. When we add a label, what else do we normally do in Storyboard? Set the constraints, right? So now we need to set constraints. As um, Yulia is saying, we need to set constraints in code. So set constraints for the message label. Okay. Some magic that happens when we do, when we set auto layout, when we do an auto layout, there's a magic that happens that we don't see. It removes the default auto resizing mask, right? There's an auto resizing mask, like if you drag in, we'll talk about that later in the units, but if we drag in some label and I center it, it will work correctly without me adding constraints. But the minute I start adding constraints, I'm telling the system, I'm telling um, iOS, whatever, that I am handling auto layout right now, right? So in doing that, I'm turning off auto resizing mask. So I'm setting auto resizing mask to false. I'm saying no longer are you doing auto resizing mask. I want to lay out my views using auto layout. What is auto layout to, re to, to review? Auto layout is basically positioning your views based on the next view. I always position my view relative to the next view. Relative, keyword, relative. So if I want to position my view relative to a top view, I say top anchor or whatever. I control drag. I say top is 20. I say leading. I say trading, correct? Right? That's using auto layout. That's not using auto resizing mask. So every time you're doing code layout, you need to do this. You need to say, I am now taking control of auto layout, or I am doing auto layout. If I'm saying I'm doing auto layout, on the view, I need to say, translates auto resizing mask into constraints is false. In other words, I am not using auto resizing mask anymore, I am using auto layout. If I'm using auto layout, I need to put in that line and I need to set that to false. By default, it's true, right? So with every view, I need to say, translates auto resizing mask into constraints equal to false. The big question is, why isn't this false by default, right? But it's not false by default because auto resizing mask is true by default. So before we do any layout code, we need to do this. Right? Line 54. Set it to false. Great. Now we could continue with our constraints. We will use NS constraint, NS layout constraint. We'll use the NS layout constraint class. On it, we'll activate all constraints. Activate which takes in an array, okay? 
So in that array, we'll set up the constraints we want for our view. For example, in our label, we want it to be centered of the entire view. We want it to be centered vertically, and we want it to be centered horizontally, okay? And we'll also give it um, some left margin and some right margin pattern. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what that looks like. So first, we will say uh, set uh, horizontal or set center, set horizontal for now. Horizontal constraint, center of main view. Yeah, uh, code, codable um, manages constraints in code. There's other ways to do it. That's one of the ways. Um, later, when we do animations, we'll see individual constraints, where you have to individually set every constraint to active. It's true, right? But for now, we'll just do it as an array, right? There's also visual formatting, which we do not get into right now, but that's a different way, right? But one of the simpler ways to use um, Error, error free here is layout constraint, activate all the constraints. All right, so here we say set horizontal constraint, we'll also set vertical, vertical constraint, uh, center of main view. What else will do? We'll set some padding, right? Some padding at the leading edge. The label. The main view is the view itself, the whole view. You never constrain like the view itself, right? It's already constrained to itself. But uh, anything you add into it, like a sub view, you have to give it some order layout. We'll get there. Uh, let's do one view first, and then we'll do the second view, right? Because that's important. Because if you try to lay out a view that doesn't exist, it's going to crash. Because if you try to do something relative to something else, and it's not in the hierarchy, it will crash that. So that's important. Like, if your add sub view is not there, and you're trying to do a layout constraint to relative to that, it's going to crash. It's always, it needs to exist first. Cool? We'll see what that looks like. Uh, so here we say set pattern at the trailing edge of the main view. Main view, main view. All right. Okay, what are we trying to achieve? We have our phone here, and we have some label, right? We wanna center it in code. In code, we have a top anchor. We have a leading anchor. We have a trailing anchor and we have a bottom anchor, right? Keep in mind we also have, imagine we have a bar up here and imagine we have a bar at the bottom. If you want to, we've seen safe area layout, right, in our storyboard. The safe area is this. Let's change the color here, is Eric here? Okay. Um, so we have a safe area layout guide. Right? So this is the safe area, and this is also the safe area. And what is the safe area? The safe area is where I could lay out my views, where it's recommended that I lay out my views. I'm not going to have a label beneath my bar, right, everybody? Right? So the safe area is this boundary here. So this is the safe area. 
Keep in mind, if you want to lay out a view, we haven't done it yet, but if you want to lay out a view based on the safe area layout guide, you have to specify that in code. There's a property called safe area layout guide. You say, I want to set my label, for example, relative to the layout guide with some, with some padding. We'll get to it. I will make it my best to show us that example because in our lab, it would be useful to know how to use the safe area layout guide. So actually, let's just use safe area layout guide now. But that's what the safe area layout guide is. Everybody, any questions about it, right? Any questions about safe area guide? And then you always, relative to leading is leading, trailing, if I have a view, like my label, for example, let us draw my label here. This is basically how I want my label to look. And we said we have, again, where's Eric? Is Eric here? Maybe I say 20. 20 would be that pattern, everybody. 20 would be that pattern. The pattern on the leading, the pattern on the, on the trailing is 20. Yes, sir? Uh, left and right side, is that the margin? The margin, yes. So leading is the left, okay. and trailing is the right. Uh, on the le there's no really left, uh, there's no safe area on the left and right. There's no bars there. Like, the, margin? the margin, yeah, yeah. And there's the blue line you see is like the recommended minimum margin. Like you'd see like eight, for example. Okay, so the margin for the padding itself. Yeah, the padding itself. Rather than safe the the safe area is if you have a bar. Like I do not want to go beyond the bar, a nav bar or a toolbar. Exactly. Or in, for example, the notch, right? The notch has that safe area there on an X device. Yeah, cool. And also the bottom too. You don't have your buttons below that. Cool. Excellent. So this is what we want. And we'll also, ah, look at this. I could take that up. We'll take this guy up here. And now, when I saw that, I was like blown away. Um, <laughs> isn't it beautiful? So we'll make our label instead, we'll use the safe area guide, right? To make it 20 instead of making it center, because your lab, as I said, I want, to, I want us to, to be exposed to safe area layout guide to see what it looks like. So that's our objective, to have some label here um, with that constraint, okay? Yes? So, all right, cool. So let's go back to code. And I know we said center here, but we're not gonna center it anymore. Our pattern will be the same. So instead, we'll say set top anchor to set top anchor 20 points from the safe area bottom. Or safe area top, right? Okay, that's what that looks like in code. So what do we want to set the constraints on? On the message label, right? We want to set that constraint on the message label. So we start off with message label. So message label, we said we want the top anchor. We said we want the top anchor to be constrained. So we use the word constrain. We want it to be constrained to something, so equal to some constant. So choose equal to some constant. And the equal to here will be the safe area top. So choose equal to, do we all see equal to? When we type in constraint, match yet? You see equal to? So choose equal to. And the equal to here, that's why we put safe area here. Safe area layout guide dot top. And we'll put in a constant. If I want to go down, am I positive or negative? What's that? Negative, right? All right, let's go back. This is important stuff, right? This is good. Um, where is zero, zero? Top left, very good, okay. Zero, zero is top left, excellent. Uh, zero, zero, so this is zero, zero. 
Okay, we agree that's zero, zero. If I go down, am I increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Is that positive or negative? Positive. Very good? No, that's good, that's good. Uh, Chelsea? Uh, from zero, zero, if I start drawing downwards, so if I'm starting to draw this way, right? Is my values, my zeros, are they increasing? Are they going positive or are they going negative? Yes, sir. The bottom right, like here? Well, depending on the phone, it could be like 414 and 6, what, what is it, 80, whatever. Just random numbers I'm putting here, right? Like whatever your device points are, that would be the point there. Benvenido, right? That's not zero, zero. That's definitely not zero, zero. It's the size of the device at this point, the maximum width and maximum height. So um, Benvenido's question, this would be maximum width, and this would be maximum height. Okay, so as I'm going down, I'm increasing my numbers, right? I'm going up, I'm decreasing my numbers. So what does that say? When I go down, it's positive. When I go up, it's negative. So draw it, whatever we have to do there um, to understand what's happening. Next question. I'm going right, am I negative or positive? Positive, very good. And the other way would be negative, right? So far, so good? Okay, so my numbers for leading, is leading positive or negative? My leading 20 number there. Positive, very good. And my 20 trailing, is it positive or negative? Negative, negative. very good. Excellent. I think we got where we wanted to go. And then the top, is the top positive or negative? Positive. Yeah. Yes. Or in relation to where you are. So if I'm at trailing, that means I'm dead at the, at the left. Or the right, sorry. Trailing, I'm at the right. If I want to back away, I need to back away with negative numbers. If I'm at the leading edge, the left edge, if I want to go forward, I'm increasing my number. Right? Same thing with the top label. And then visualize the numbers. If I'm going from 00, zero right, to Ben Benito's number here, or 414.688, as I'm going diagonally, I am increasing both values. Questions? Cool? All right, let us lay out our first view. Let's continue on. Uh, so our floating number, we said 20. So we said top anchor is uh, top safe area, and the constant is 20. That's what we draw, correct? Yes? Questions? OK, next up for our label, what do we have? We say message label dot leading anchor constrained to, what are we constraining to? Yes. What are we constraining to? Equal to? lead in, right? And our constant we said is 20. And lastly, we said, actually, why am I not putting that over here where we have the comments? And lastly, we said message label dot trailing, not uh, trailing, anchor, constrain. And this time, what are we constraining to? Trailing. And we have, what's our constant? Or our pattern? Is it 20? Negative 20. Right, that's what we drew, correct? Excellent. So at this point, we are done. This is a label. We have three constraints. We are done, right? So top, leading, and trailing. We have to remember what comments after each one. Yeah, because it's an array, right? An array of things. Uh, each of them have a comma. And as I said, we'll see, there's a, diff, there's a way to do them individually, but for each individual one, like example, let me just show us really quickly. We don't have to type that out right now, but I would show us what it looks like. If you don't put it in the array like this, 
for each individual one, you have to say is active equal to true. Everybody? If you do not put it in an array, for each individual one of the constraints, you have to say true. If you forget to say true somewhere, your thing will not work as expected, and you'll be like, oh my god, what did, what did I do? Oh, I forgot to say is active is true. Basically, it's setting the constraint, okay? So if you don't want to do like animations or anything individually, just put everything in an array. Everybody with me? Cool. Awesome. All right, so are we done typing? Let's verify. So we call in setup message label here in the common in it. Common in it gets called on line 35. And make sure to say add subview here, because if you don't add the subview, it won't be on the view. So you need to explicitly say add subview. Add subview says, take this view from my object library and add it to my scene. That's what add subview means. Add subview. Add a view to that existing view. Okay. So let's go off to our main view controller. How do we get that view now in our main view controller? Because now our main view controller, we want our, the main view to be the entire view of that main view controller. Everybody with me? OK. So we'll start off with writing some, some instance of it. We'll call it main view. And main view is just a main view. OK. So far, so good. And here, if you're doing code, so if doing programmatic UI implement and set up the view or the, the view in load view. What is load view? Load view gets called before view did load. Load view sets up the initial view of the controller. Okay? Do not call super when using or overriding load view. Okay, so load view, and we are saying now our view, come on, load view, you know what I want. Load view, we're saying our view now, the view property of the view controller, every view controller has a view property, correct? I want to assign my view property, my main view. So basically it overrides that view. So that view now is my main view. The main view that we just created is now our view for our view controller. And as we said, let's see with breakpoints and see the order of calls here. So it first calls load view, then it calls view to load. Let's run the app. How come we should have focus here? Because there's no setup there for that view load view to happen. There's no extra additional work that your load view needs to do. So Apple recommends not calling super there. Um, okay, so first we have load view, and then if I continue running, it will call my view did load. So you see the order of calls there? So if somebody asks you which one gets called first, load view or view did load, we know load view gets called first, because load view does all the setup for the view. If you need to do any additional setup, you will do it in view did load. Ah, look at that. And we actually have a label. How would we get it to, like, if you have to change, like, the columns, whether it's in the center of the label itself, whether it's set to be the center of the label? Oh, yeah, we could do all that configuration. You mean, like, center alignment and everything? Yeah. Right? So um, I do it myself, and I also highly, 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 highly recommend it. When you're setting up your views initially, please give it a background color. Um, so, for example, our label here, let's give it a background color. Uh, background color, somebody just likes yellow. Uh, what do we say, system yellow? 
if I run it again, right? So we have our, um, our label, and we see how it's actually appearing. Everybody with me? We see the pattern and all that stuff there. Um, Tiffany's question is now, how do we center it, right? Because in our attributes inspector, we could center it by clicking on the alignment button, right? But in code, what do we do? And fonts and all that thing there, right? Uh, all the questions. We're not gonna go through each property, but they're existing in code. So first, if we wanna center it, let me make this a little bigger. If we want to center our text, we go back to our label, and anybody, any ideas here? Text alignment, awesome. So text alignment equal to center. And the question was asked yesterday, everything we do, do we have to like run it again? Yes. So every change you do, you have to run it again and see how it renders, right? But SwiftUI is where we are. SwiftUI does that, right? That's where we're headed in the future. So as we type code, we could see it right, right away. Everybody with me? Cool? Can you scroll down? Scroll down. Um, where are we? Is your constraints off? No, you can see that code. Okay. What's that? Oh, get rid of the simulator. How are we doing? Who's, who misses storyboards? Nobody. Okay. Converts. Um, what's that? The fonts. Um, the fonts. Tanya wants to do fonts. Okay. So label dot font equal to UI font. And then you could give your font name. You have a name here. Or you could use system font. Give it a size, give it a weight. Um, say 17, and then weight. I could do regular, I could do bold. I could do, what do you want, semi-bold? So if you want to change your font, there's a font property. If you want to change your alignment, there's an alignment property. So everything that you could do in storyboard, you could do in code. Everybody? Questions? Don't forget to call your Well, yeah, for sure the um, common in it in the um, in it refrain, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, maybe another question. Uh, well, some reason my main views. How's everybody's label? Is it appearing, Greg? Is your label appearing? Yeah. What's that? Oh, no, no, the colors. Just colors, colors, sorry. Cur colors on the UI elements. As you're laying out things, because sometimes you're like, oh, it doesn't appear, or, right? Use background colors, and then when you're done, you could take them out, right? That's like what I was saying. Like, highly recommend you use colors as you're laying out your views, because you, you, you can't see every detail of it. It's not like you dragged it in on storyboard, but some visual color would help you. If that makes sense, yeah. right? Uh, Greg. I was going to say, I was under the impression you're saying set the color as like the background view, so when you load up programmatically, you know what that means. That's what I'm oh, 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 you mean that? Yeah, you could do that too. You could give the main view some color. Yeah, you could do that. Um, but if you give the elements themselves a color, you'll see them too. Right. Like here we see our pattern is correct, right? It's like symmetric around. Oh, so give you like yeah, as to where it is, right? Um, and the padding and everything like that, right? Uh, because without the padding, you don't exactly see, without a color, you don't exactly see where no begins and where it 
it ends. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so let's see. How are we doing? Are we good? Can we go till one? Where? The center. Oh, center alignment? On line 19. Mel, how are you doing? Awesome. Kelby? All right, so let's go ahead and set up a button because a button has more things to it too. Um, okay, so let's create a button. We'll call it create, we'll call it not private, we want access to it. Um, let's call it reset button. Anybody not seeing the label? Raise your hand. Everybody sees the label? Okay. Let's go ahead and create a button. Um, it's a UI button. Uh, where am I? Back in here? Yeah, I'm just curious. I saw it as one of the options. I've never really <laughs> used that. <laughs> but the documentation must give you more information. Um, so button, what's our button do? Our button is a title. Let's give it a title. So on our button, to set the title, we say button.setTitle. Set title. And title, we give it some string here. I'll call it reset. And the state is normal. State normal meaning, while, whether it be highlighted or whatever, the, the title will always be reset. You could do things where you click on it and you change the name as the user clicks on it. That's the state of it. Like selected, you could change the title. So there's different states on a button, um, okay? So if you don't provide different states, the states, all the states will take reset. All right, so we have a, um, we have a title on it. Let's give it a title color. So set title color. We'll use system blue. You could be um, experimental with your colors. Don't have to use my colors. Uh, system blue. Okay. Let's go ahead and lay out that reset button. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, the dot normal, so the states on a button. Where it's not selected, where it's selected, right? There's different states on it. If you say where it's normal, it goes for every state of the button, whether it be selected or not. So the title could change based on the state. Cool. There might be situations where you want to change that. But um, if you don't, then just normal for everything. Tiffany? Then? I put it as um, highlighted. Okay. <laughs> you could experiment with stuff. Um, all right. So we have our reset button. And now let's go set up the constraints for it. We create a function here, call it setup reset button. We could probably rename those, like setup reset button constraints or something like that. Um, so you know what it is. And do the same for here. So you could rename this to setup message label one second. Get it. So set up reset button constraints here. What's the first thing we do? Add subview. So we need to add subview. And so add subview, we add in the reset button. Very good. Next, what do we need to do? If we say we're doing auto layout, what's the one line we need to write? We need to set the auto resizing to false, right? So we need to say on the reset button, translate auto resizing mask to false. Okay, perfect. You will help me to put that in. 
So we have a reset button here. Okay, so this is where we wanna go. We have our label and we have a reset button here. What constraints do we need? Up to you, right? Like, give us some numbers. The bottom of the label. So let me take that label down a little bit. I'm taking the button down. It's called reset, right? It doesn't have to be in the middle. I just put it somewhere so it's right. So this is where the button is. What what constraints do we need for the button? Class, what constraints do we need? Okay, so you're saying we need one for the top, right? So we need one here for the top. And what's it what's the other one? The lead the leading and trailing. Or we could just say center, center X. Right? Is that fair? I could just say center X and then the label the button itself knows its size. Right? So I could just say center X. So two constraints. Do we agree? Two constraints for the button? So let's go set that up. Um, cool. So set constraints. We said reset button. We want to center it. So if you want to center X, so center X is horizontal. Everybody, the X axis is horizontal. Uh, let's see. So we have our X and our Y. Our Y. If I want to say center it on the X axis, I'm talking about left and right. Everybody? And Y is top by. So there's no horizontal and vertical here, there's axes. So I want to say center x anchor constraint equal constraint equal no no constants constraint equal to center x. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Y is up and down. On the, in the storyboard, we would probably want to say horizontal for this one, not vertical. It's going to be a top anchor. Top anchor is some constant. Okay, so let us use our array syntax right here. So NS layout constraints dot activate. Okay, so we have one constraint, and the second constraint, Tiffany, would be top anchor. What am I, what's the relative um, layout? What's the closest neighbor to my button? The label. the label, right? So my closest, I always try to do all the layout with my closest neighbor. My closest neighbor is not the top, um, the, 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 the top or below the, um, the nav bar. It is the label, as Mr. Christian says. So we'll make it relative to the label. So here I'll say top anchor constraint equal to, I'm making it relative to the, re to the um, message label. So here I'm saying message label. Message label what? What is the constraint of the message label? What am I constraining it to? Is it the bottom, the top? I can't just, can just say message label. I have to say what constraint of the message label? The bottom, the bottom right? So very good. So here I say message label bottom anchor. And here you could pass in whatever constant you want. I'll put in 40 here. So two constraints, and we're done. Keep in mind, we could also use multipliers. So the same way we say make something equal to some percentage of a next view, we could use multipliers on constraints as well. I don't think you have multipliers in your lab per se, but we will have some example at some point this week. We're using a multiplier, right? Maybe I want my height. Actually, you can experiment with it in your lab. Your lab has the color. It's the same um, color guessing game. So your, for your main view, everybody remember the color guessing game, mm -hmm. right? So the main view, the main view, you can make it relative, like the height anchor of it. You could say height anchor is equal to height anchor with a multiplier of zero point something. 
right? So if you want to make it like 80% the height or 50% the height, you would say height anchor equal to height anchor multiplier 0 0.8 or 0 0.6, which equals to some percentage, okay? Um, all right, so we call our setup reset button. Did we call it yet? Make sure you call it in your command in it here, setup reset button constraints. And I still want to refactor this one. X code, come on, there you go. So setup message label constraints. I just refactored the name. So everything is called like setup something constraints. Okay, let's run it and test it out. See if our reset button shows up. And as I said, I should have probably given it a background color. But in that case, it just shows up, it's fine. But let's give it a background color just to see what the pattern looks like. So button, button, button. I could give it the same yellow color. So background color equal to system yellow. So there's our button. Let me take out the simulator. Any questions about constraints so far? So we have access to multipliers if you want to do multipliers relative to something, right? We have constants if you want to make some pattern or some, um, some number, some points number. We have top, we have bottom, we have leading, and we have trailing anchors, right? So that's enough to get us started with our labs and everything there. And we know the parts of adding a view programmatically. One, we say add subview. So add that view to the subview, or add that view to the view hierarchy. We want to change auto resizing mask to true, from, from true to false, because now we're doing auto layout. So if you're doing auto layout, you're not using auto resizing mask anymore. And then you go ahead and you use NS layout constraint and activate everything. If you don't want to activate all the constraints, you have to do them individually using what I showed earlier, where you do them individually and you set them active individually. And this could come in handy with, for example, animations. But each of them needs to be set individually, like this. I'll just put a comment here. So that's it. Not, no big fuss there. Um, it's good, it's good. The only one drawback, every time you do something, you have to run the code again to see what's happening, as opposed to like having your storyboard, and once you set up the constraints visually, you know what's going on, okay? But no, you're not here forever, right? Because SwiftUI is moving very fast. Before you know it, you'll be writing more SwiftUI code than UI kit code. Uh, yes, sir? The title button in the nav bar? Yeah. We'll do a different lesson with like um, configuring the nav bar appearances more, but not today. Cool? Yes, sir? It just doesn't show. It is just not activated. Like if you have a top anchor, it won't be activated. Like it doesn't work. It's present somewhere. It's like still present in the code. It's in the code, but it's not active. Like it could be an animation, for example where you turn it off to do some animation work, right? Um, there's a next question I wanted to do. So we ran it, we tested it, but now our button is in action, and let us do that. Any questions, any other questions? Okay, let us go back to our view controller. We made our button public, so we have access to it, reset button. So we'll go to our view controller, and in our view did load here, let's just do, we have show settings and resets will just reset colors. So right below show settings here, I will have a private function, call it reset, reset uh, app color. Let 
reset app color is some sort of sender and sender is a UI button and here we'll just print uh, reset background or reset app color okay and let's wire that up so when you click on the button that function will get called let us go ahead and set that up so in our view load right here add target action for reset button and here we have access to main view dot reset button that add target so on a button we have a add target function on a button we have a add target action so very similar to in your storyboard when you have a button you control drag to have an action. That's the action we created in code. So add target. Target, very similar to what we had with our UI button. Target would be our self. So target is going to be self. Action will be the selector we just created. The reset button. And then we'll have some control event. Every time you control drag from a button over to your storyboard, the control event, the thing that happens, or the action that triggers, is called touch up inside, right? So when the user clicks on your button, the touch up inside event gets triggered. That's what actually triggers your function. So we'll do it in code, but before that, let us, let us go down and, so reset app color, that's fine. We need to make it an app objective C function. Reset up color, that's fine. Reset up color. Da, da, da. Reset up color. Okay, so we, uh, we added the art object to C because it's a selector, right? Go back to add target. And what did we say target is, Julia? Self, right? The view controller itself, the instance. Um, our action is a selector, so we say pound selector. And the method is reset, so simply type in reset app color, press enter. And our event, this is also new. The event you want to trigger is touch up inside. So you type dot, it's an enum, touch up inside, not touch down, not touch. There's a bunch of touches here. So touch down, cancel, exit, up inside, touch up inside, that's what we want. Right? So what does it say? A touch-up event in the control where the finger is inside the bounds of the control. So my finger is down inside that button, it triggers. So touch-up inside, okay? And again, this is the default that you use when you're in Storyboard. Anytime you drag from a, a, a button, it's touch-up inside. Okay, cool. Let's run this. And let's verify that our reset print statement happens. So just click on your reset button. And you should see reset app color getting drawn. OK? OK. What happened? <laughs> you OK? <laughs> All right, I think I'll stop here just because I don't want to keep, there's more things we have to do. Like the next one would be going to the settings here and add in a picker view. But I want to take a break here, and then we'll come back, right? Because we've seen a bunch of stuff here. So what we've seen, we've seen a lot. We've, want, we've went from the app delegate to the scene delegate. We set up our code in the scene delegate to present our view controller we want. On that view controller, one second, I'll come right there. On our view controller, we created a sub-view or a subclass of UI view. That subclass, we created all our view code. Guys, the more view code you put in your view subclass, the better, right? The less view code you have in your view controller, the better. Your view controller, you don't want to be bloated with view code. View code belongs in the view subclass, okay? As much view code as you could put in your view subclass, the better, right? And all what you have to do is say in your load view, load view, here is my view. Everybody? Everybody. Okay. 
Um, the big parts of our constraints we went over was, let me go to this one, it's slightly less stuff happening there. In our setup constraints, first we do add subview. So setup constraints, so steps, steps for adding constraints in code. Uh, this is step one, right? This is step two, making sure that the auto resizing mask is set to false. And again, this happens automatically the minute you use auto layout in Storyboard, right? But here you have to do it in code. Um, step three, set the constraints, right? Oh, I want to show us one more thing. So let me break the code. Um, let's see. I have to break this. Okay, let me see. That should break it, right? Um, if I do not do this here. Boom. Cool. All right, so let's go back to set up message label constraints. If for some reason you forgot to say add subview in the set up message label, right? You forgot to say add subview, you'll get a constraints crash. And don't, you know, don't be fearful here. Um, look at the code here. You want to go to right where anytime you see some stack trace, right? Some stack trace of code with numbers. What you want to do is scroll up to right around the zero stack trace here, right around here, go above here, that's gonna be more human readable. And here, even here you could go. So unable to satisfy, let's see, unable to activate constraints with anchors, um, da, 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 because they do not have a common ancestor, right? What does that mean? That means you're trying to set up some view that's trying to be relative to a different view, but, one of them are not in the hierarchy. So if you go back to your code here, for example, that's one of the reasons why you want to modularize or separate your constraints into functions. Because if you went through the rules, you know that you add subview first, right? And here we're not adding the subview. So it's not in the view. But where the crash actually happens here, where am I? Where the crash actually happens here is here. I'm trying to set up this view here relative to something that's not in the view hierarchy, right? So the order of constraints is very important. The way you add subviews, sorry, is very important. If you want to constrain, for example, our, let's go back to our app. Well, it's in a broken state. Let me fix it. Those are very important. If I want to lay out my reset button relative to my message label, Right? Message label needs to be in the view hierarchy first. Right? If I want to say reset button that anchor is relative to message label, message label has to exist first. Everybody with me? Right? If that if you're trying to do it and it doesn't exist, before that view is trying to set up, you'll crash. It's gonna get a crash, it will tell you not in the view hierarchy or some constraint problem. Everybody with me? Right? So remember, auto, auto layout is always relative to some view. Right? It's always relative to some view. That view that you're trying to make it relative to needs to be in the view hierarchy first. Right? Then you can go ahead and do what you want to do. Yes, sir? So that means we should set up the constraints for like our root element before we set up the constraints for any element that comes with the relationship? Yes. Yes. Exactly. So if your thing is a button and you want to have a text relative, a label relative to that button, that button needs to be in the sub view in the, um, that button needs to be part of the sub views of the view before anything else. All right. Cool. Right. So as Aaron is pointing out here, if you switch button, if you put button before label, it will crash. Because button is trying to say, hey, I want to be relative to this thing, but the thing I'm trying to be relative to is not in the view hierarchy. It's on the that exactly. So we'll come across those, but know that we don't run away from those errors. We go towards them, right? We firemen, right? Fire coders, right? So just know that your view hierarchy is important here. Everybody with me? 
right? So it's very similar to like storyboard. You drag in a label and you make a button relative to that label. You don't drag in a label then say, oh, um, you don't drag in a label and then say that label is constrained to something that doesn't exist, right? It needs to exist in order for you to continue, okay? Those are the little things we'll come across as we're writing code. Uh, okay, any other questions? Any questions? We've gone through a lot of concepts so far. We started off with a storyboard. We got rid of the storyboard. We did everything in code, starting with the scene delegate. Did we do any code in the app delegate? No. no. We did all our code for setting up our view hierarchy in the scene delegate. But if it's iOS 12, where do we put that code? In the app delegate. The scene delegate exists in iOS 12? No. No, right? That's the question. That's the answer. No, it does not exist. Sin delegate exists iOS 13 and up. Yeah. When you get to your startup job or whatever you get to, you will be supporting other versions of iOS. Um, by the time you're ready, you have iOS 14, right? And then you have iOS 13, correct? But your client might want to have their app in Brazil or China or some third country, right? Where they're still on iOS 10 or even 9, right? So, I mean, thankfully we're not Android developers because it could go even lower, right? We know, right? We know where that goes, right? Maybe iOS 6. I mean, somebody said iOS 6, they still saw one instance in the wild. But um, iOS developers are really, not iOS developers. Apple users are very good with updating their operating system really quickly, and Apple does a great job of pushing those updates. So most likely, you will be supporting the current version, minus two at minimum. So that means 14 minus two, that would be 12. And then 12 still has app delegate, no scene delegate. Does that make sense? But um, yeah, so always being able to support older versions. At some point, like your company, it's up to the company, not even the company, the client. Right? If it's a big company like a Facebook, they're probably even iOS 9 because they want to get to as many customers as possible. But a startup, maybe current version minus one. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So uh, we'll stop here and we'll continue in the afternoon. We will go to our settings. We'll create a pick of view. And then we'll set up the pick of view code. We're familiar with that. And as we change our picker, as we change our picker, the background color will change, and we'll use user defaults to capture that. And then that'll be the app there. And that'll be enough of a context for you to work on your lab. Cool? Awesome.